Hi, this is Jay Haskamp, and I'd like to welcome you to another Tech Talk by Frontier Precision. Today's session, we're going to discuss creating and editing targets for total stations using the Trimble Access software. Having the proper prism and target settings in Trimble Access is critical to ensure you are using the total station accurately and to its fullest potential. The topics we're going to discuss today are locating and changing your target, how to manage your targets, the importance of prism constants, and the target tracking options. First, let's take a look at locating and modifying the target settings. When you're connected to a conventional instrument in Trimble Access, the target icon, along with the instrument icon, will appear in the status bar. The number next to the target icon indicates the numbered target currently in use. To alternate between targets or to edit the target height and prism constant, you can simply tap on the target icon or alternatively, you can pick Control and the letter G on your keyboard. Once selected, you will see a list of current targets saved on your controller. To select the target to use, tap the appropriate target in the pop-up list. For this example, we will choose target number 3. Trimble Access allows you to create up to 5 non-DR targets. If we wish to modify or change or add a target, we simply pick on the target icon and instead of picking the target name, we choose either the target height or the prism constant setting. Notice when I do this, it brings me to the target settings and I can make any changes necessary. Now, let's take a look at managing our targets. Here we will discuss how to modify an existing target. We'll also discuss what a DR target is. We will add a new target and we will show you how to delete an unwanted target. The first thing we're going to look at is how to modify an existing target in Trimble Access. So to do this, we are first going to pick our target icon to bring up our current target list. And target one is the target that we wish to modify. So to do this, we can pick either on the target height or the prism constant setting to pull up the target form. Notice that currently this is set up as a custom prism type. For this example, we want to use a Trimble multi-track prism because we're going to use an S-series robotic total station. So the first thing we need to do is to pick our prism type from the list and choose VX S-series multi-track prism. Notice when we pick this, we do get a small icon showing the prism as a verification to make sure that it's the correct prism or it matches what we're using. It will also auto-populate the prism constant for us so there's no need to look that up or to change it. Next, we will see the tracking mode, whether it's active tracking, passive tracking, or semi-active tracking. We will discuss what these settings are later. For right now, we're going to leave it on active tracking. And lastly, we have our target ID setting. The Trimble multi-track targets have settings from one to eight. This gives us eight different channels that we can work on with our target ID. What this means is that when we have our target ID set to a specific value, such as 3 in our data collector, and our target is set to 3 on the actual target itself, our total station will only track and follow the target set to target ID number 3. So with that said, in theory, we could have up to 8 targets on one job site and not be jumping off and tracking other targets. To save these changes, we'll simply press accept in the lower right corner and now notice that target 1 is our current target and these values have updated to what we have changed. The other option we have here in our targets is target DR. Target DR stands for direct reflex. This is for total stations that are equipped with the direct reflex technology. What this means is we are able to take measurements using direct reflex, meaning that we do not have to have a prism in order to get a distance and an angle. DR is handy for shooting things that we cannot access with a prism, such as tall building corners, power poles, and signs. Typically with DR, we're going to leave our target height at zero because we want a distance and an angle directly to the object that we're measuring. And since we're not using a prism, we do not need to set a prism constant. DR is available in most modern Trimble total stations. Notice now that when we accept, it sets our target to DR, and instead of having a prism icon, we have this red laser type icon. This is our indicator that we are working in the direct reflex mode. Now, we want to add a second target. So to do so, we're going to again pick on our target, and we're going to select either the height or the prism constant next to either of the targets that we have available. 
on the target one form we can now pick add on the bottom and notice it changes to target two now for this particular instance I'm going to keep my target height at two meters because I'm using the same pole and we will talk about pole offsets in a minute and I'm going to switch to the active track 360 notice again my icon changes for verification that I have the right target selected my prism constant is automatically set to 22 millimeters and I have the options of manual or active tracking. And lastly, I have a target ID of 1 through 8. With the Active Track 360 target, we also have the ability to utilize the internal tilt sensor and also the Bluetooth connectivity with our Trimble data collector. If we have the Bluetooth partnership created with our data collector and our Active Track Prism, and we have the incorrect target ID set on our data collector, whatever we turn on and set on the Prism, the data collector will automatically update to help eliminate some issues with having incorrect target IDs, thus reducing issues with tracking. Also, if we utilize the internal tilt sensor in the Active Track 360 target, we will get a digital level bubble right on our Trimble Access screen that will give us an indicator of how plumb our pole is. Now that we have this target created, we can hit accept and notice our target will now change to target number two with our prism constant of 22 millimeters, which matches our Active Track target. Now, the last step, we want to delete a target. When we pull up our target list, notice we have target 1 and target 2. Target 1 and the DR target cannot be deleted. However, we can delete target 2 if we wish. So to do this, we will pick the details next to our target 2 from the list. And notice now when I go to my target form screen, I have a delete button that I can pick at the bottom. Once I delete it, it switches to target 1 and notice the delete button disappears because I have to keep a target 1 and I have to keep a target TR. Once I accept that, I can go back to my list and notice that target 2 is now deleted. Now let's talk about target heights. When using a VX S-Series multi-track target, an active track 360, or a VX S-Series 360 target, it's suggested to use the Trimble Robotic Pole. This is a carbon fiber and aluminum pole where the graduations are already offset to compensate for the difference between where the target attaches to the pole and the center of my glass. This means that when I set my pole to 2 meters, I am 2 meters to the center of the glass. And the actual prism height is easily read or set simply by using the graduations on the actual pole. Another thing to keep in mind when setting your target heights is to make sure you have the proper selection of where you're measuring to. You do have the option of true height or bottom notch. Typically when working with targets or prisms, you're going to be using the true height distance. The difference between these two with the Trimble Multi-Track or Active Track 360 prism is roughly 5 tenths of a foot. So if you're measuring and you're seeing roughly half a foot bust in your vertical, one place you want to check is to your target height settings and make sure that you have true height selected. This is also important for using the Trimble Robotic Poles as the offsets and the pole graduations are set for the true height measurements. Now let's talk about prism constants. The prism constant or distance offset must be set for each prism that is used as a target in a conventional survey. To edit the prism constant, first we're going to tap the target icon in the status bar. Next, we want to tap the prism constant next to the target that we want to edit. Keep in mind that when using a standard Trimble prism such as the Active Track 360, the Multi Track, or the Trimble VX and S Series 360, the prism constant is already populated and cannot be changed. However, if we are using a custom prism, this will give us the opportunity to adjust the prism constant. So here we need to enter what our prism constant is going to be in the field. Enter a negative value if the prism constant is to be subtracted from the measured distances. And also remember to enter the prism constant in millimeters. For this example, we're going to put negative 30 and hit tab and it will populate millimeters for us. When using a Trimble VX spatial station, or Trimble S series total station, 5600 or 3600 instrument. All prism constant corrections are applied in the general survey software. For some non-Trimble instruments, the general survey software will check to see if a prism constant has been applied by the instrument and the software. When you select station setup, the status line messages will show what has or has not been checked. If the general survey software cannot check the setting on the conventional instrument, do one of the following. If there's a prism constant set on the instrument, 
make sure that the prism constant in general survey software is set to zero. If there is a prism constant set in the general survey software, make sure that the prism constant in the instrument is set to zero. And the prism constant can be reviewed or edited at any time on previously stored observations by going to the review job or the point manager screens. And lastly, let's talk about Trimble's target tracking options. You can configure the software to use an active target ID if you are using a Trimble VX spatial station or a Trimble S series total station with the search capabilities and one of the following targets. An active track 360, a multi-track prism, or a VX and S series 360 prism. Ensure that the correct prism type and mode is selected in the target form. This will ensure that the appropriate correction values are applied to the slope distance and vertical angle for geocentric offset and prism constant. The two targets that we are going to discuss in depth are the Trimble Active Track 360 target and the Multi Track target. First, let's look at the Active Track 360. The Active Track 360 is a reflective foil target designed for use as an active tracker target. The AT360 includes a tilt sensor that enables e-bubble support when connected to the controller with Bluetooth. The e-bubble is used to check that the target is level and the tilt angle and tilt distance is stored with each observation. When using the Active Track 360, as you can see here, the prism constant is something that we cannot change. However, we can change the tracking mode between active and manual, and we can set our target ID between the numbers 1 and 8. When connected to the AT360 using Bluetooth, changing the target ID in the general survey software automatically updates the target ID setting on the AT360 once you tap Accept on the target screen. Likewise, if you change the target ID on the AT360 and the current target is an AT360, the target ID is automatically updated on the controller. The AT360 should always be used in active mode when possible. Manual mode can be used if the battery in the AT360 needs charging and you do not have a replacement battery available. When using the AT360 in manual mode, auto lock is disabled and you must manually aim the instrument at the target. Also note that when you enable auto lock and the current prism is the active track 360, the software automatically switches the tracking mode to active if it is in manual mode. Now let's talk about the multi-track target. When using the Trimble multi-track target, the tracking mode can be set to passive, active, or semi-active. It is recommended that the multi-track target be used within the recommended vertical angle tolerances. When using the multi-track in active mode, you want to stay within plus or minus 15 degrees from horizontal. And when using the multi-track in passive mode, you want to stay within plus or minus 30 degrees from horizontal. Using the multi-track target outside these tolerances may degrade the accuracy of your measurements. If you do not operate in a reflective environment, set the tracking mode to passive. This means that the instrument tracks the glass on the multi-track target and not the diodes. This is a more accurate way to measure. However, your instrument is susceptible to lock on to other reflective surfaces such as windows, safety vests, and road signs. If you operate in a highly reflective environment or on a site with many prisms, then you can set the tracking mode to active to ensure that you maintain a constant lock on the target. This means that the VX S series robots will only track the multi-track prism that is set to the target ID specified in the software. Lastly, if you operate in a reflective environment but require precise elevations, set the tracking mode to semi-active to ensure that you maintain constant lock on the correct target. When the tracking mode is set to semi-active, the target ID is used to track the prism. The instrument then automatically switches to passive tracking mode when taking a standard measurement. This results in a more precise vertical angle measurement. When passive tracking is used when measuring, you must be aware that there is a risk of nearby reflective surfaces interfering with the measurement. To read about more information on semi-active tracking, see our document entitled, How to Get the Most Out of Your Multi-Track Prism. The link for this document will be posted on this video's page. And that concludes our tech talk on creating and editing targets for total stations in Trimble Access. We hope you found this beneficial and will join us again next time. Thank you.